Hey. Hey, Glenn. What's up? What's happening in Chicago and Detroit? Oh, I didn't. I didn't see the news today. The only thing they I just evacuated Chicago Stadium. Really? Tornado. 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 Oh, tornado. The only thing I degrees in Chicago. Fifty degrees. Yeah. The only thing I heard, um, anything related with Chicago, was they were comparing uh, buildings because it's like a competition. But suppo- uh, supposedly uh, New York has the tallest building. Well, and, apparently there's a weather warning from Chicago to Detroit through Indianapolis, getting them to empty. Uh, Stadium during a football game yeah, because yeah. of weather must be a a first. You think it's an excuse, like almost like the nine eleven, get people to evacuate so they can? Well, it probably is setting up something. The next time around, they won't move, and I then the flood will come up to the fiftieth row or something. I just saw an earthquake. Um, it was weird because I don't think I've seen an earthquake in this place before. It was in um, Ascension Island. They call it, it's, in, it's to the uh, like west of Africa. It, it was on uh, the CNN News. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Um, Dana wanted to know... Um, if you could uh, send money to that PayPal account that Jenny had, and I think we don't I have access to the internet, so no, right. PayPal is not being accessed. Okay, I'll tell them. Have to do it by mail. So what else is going on with you, Glenn? How you feeling? Hey. What else is going on with you? How are you feeling? Well, I had a sore leg from uh, something I don't know is causing it. But uh, down my right, left side. Mm. I took some painkillers about an hour ago. It seems to be dying down somewhat. I'm down into the eight foot range in digging. You're fine before um, since I last talked to you. Hey? What'd you find since I last talked to you? Did you find any other clues? Or? I haven't found any uh, new pieces. However, the uh, the news last night basically making a uh, connection between Israel and Canada. That's not what was their intent. They had uh, a show or a one-hour movie type of thing, documentary on uh, Israel called The Miracle of Israel. And it uh, talked about four events prophesied in the Torah regarding the end of time. And that uh, those uh, four events, three have been completed, and the other one is in the works. They were talking about the uh, vote at the United Nations in 1947 that... uh, permitted the partitioning of Palestine. 
and a section of Palestine was given to a country which would be uh, named later about the size of New Jersey, is how they described it. Great Britain at the time was, in fact, in charge of Palestine at a military presence to keep order in that area, but they wanted to leave. And the UN at the time did not have a building in New York, so they met in a sports stadium of some kind in a place that caught my attention, Flushing Meadows, New York. And in Flushing Meadows, they had uh, a vote on partitioning Palestine. And everybody was told, listen to the radio. And the yes vote won by 33 votes and 13 abstained took three minutes. The whole world was concentrated on a radio broadcast from Flushing Meadows in 1947. The United States had offered the Jewish people a country in the U.S. should they choose to do it, and that would have been the panhandle of Alaska, centered by Sitka. The town of Sitka is basically the uh, the area from which uh, the Tea Party and what's her name? Okay. Well, isn't Sitka... Sarah Palin comes from? Mm-hmm. But. After building a synagogue in Sitka, they were turned turned down. The Israelis wanted to go back to Palestine. Now, if you remember correctly, Sitka is the name of the 49 spruce trees That's what put I out in front of our property. Yeah. Sitka... The original Sitka comes from a town on the North Sea in Russia near St. Petersburg. And it means archangel. In other words, not the original angels, but the angels from the ark. 49 of which are lined up on our front yard. Now, in 1948, there was to be a declaration of independence for the creation of a state in Palestine called Israel. It, of course, is based on the name Sarai, which they didn't discuss in the movie. And Sarai is the wife of Abraham and had a child at the age of 90 while he was 100 years old. All of this to say that in 1948, Golda Meir, knowing who really runs the world, ran on a visit to Jordan to see the king and pleaded with the king of Jordan, Abdullah, not to go to war against Israel. But Abdullah told her that he, unlike her belief, was not alone in the leadership of the Arabs, he was only one of five, and that 
should she declare a new state of Israel, he would have no choice but to join the other four in the war against Israel and asked her not to do it, to hold off for a while. And Golda Meir said, we've been waiting 2,000 years. We've held up long enough. So on May 14, 1948, there was a proclamation of a state of Israel and immediately a war with the Arabs began. Wars were repeated in 56, 67, 76, and 82. The interesting thing is that the proclamation occurred in 48, but in 1949, Canada became Canada as we know it today when Newfoundland joined Canada in a manner similar to when Hawaii joined the U.S., which came later, of course, but Newfoundland made Canada what it is today, Newfoundland Labrador, which basically set up Canada as the new Israel in times to come. In other words, there was an original Israel, a second Israel in 1948, and a third Israel being Canada in 1949. 49 is the border between Canada and the U.S., and it's a 13. 48 is more the old number, 484, when you consider it was done on May the 14th, 1948. So what I'm saying is that that's two hints, the, the Sitka hint and the creation of Canada in 49 that are hints that Canada with its uh, maple leaf and maple water for childbearing is more likely the final version of uh, Israel. Although the people who are making the claim that we are approaching the end times make no connection to Canada. During the original war in 1948 with the Arabs, there was a moment when the people who were fighting on behalf of Israel believed that they were going to be run over by the Syrians as the Syrians were marching towards the border. And some guy who had been injured, a Jewish guy who had been injured and was lying on the battlefield, uh, was expecting to be killed as the Syrians moved forward. But he received a vision that said God was on their side and not to worry. And he found it difficult not to worry as they were talking about the Syrians moving and and the Israelis having little or no military experience since most of them had come out of concentration camps, were not even in shape to fight. And uh, all of a sudden, the Syrians stopped their advance for no apparent reason, retreated back to Baghdad. The 
military, for whatever worth it was from Israel, followed it all the way back into Syria, wondering why this had happened. When they got close to the capital of Syria, a storm broke out. And the storm was so bad, so windy, just like Chicago and Detroit today, that it blew the earth. It was kind of like a sandstorm. It blew the earth all over the place. And as the soldiers looked at at what had taken place, the Israelis, they noticed that the trick the Syrians had pulled was to lay mines all over the place so that the soldiers following them back from Israel would all be killed with these exploding mines. But the storm uncovered all the mines, and they were perfect sight to all the soldiers so that they could, in fact, return to Israel without losing anybody to uh, explosive devices along the way. The... um, People who moved into Israel after 1948 and before 1956 included a million Russians as the biggest group, Russian Jews. The second group was Chinese. Never heard of that before. Chinese. The third group was Ethiopian. And the fourth group was Spain, Spanish. But in and among the Spanish were a large number of Americans because Spain basically had become Arabic from uh, previously being Jewish for 700 years, known as the Sephardic Jews. Uh, they had changed their religion for the purpose of surviving the Arab conquest, and many people who thought they were Arabs were in fact Jews. Many of them had in fact traveled uh, to America and Mexico and discovered their roots and returned to Israel. So that's how the country was populated, and they began immediately the building, which would be the third building of the temple. If you consider the temple that was built in Sitka, it would, in fact, be the fourth temple. Now, the people of Israel who are making this movie, which are basically conservatives, said that the temple was rebuilt at Mount Moriah. Moriah is Roma 1, or Roma A, the A slave out of the... Roma. Now, the whole message that was being put through here was that in the Torah, 
there is a story written, a prophecy written by Jeremiah that declares that in the future four miracles would in fact announce the end of the world. They call it the end of days. And those four events would be, one, the uh, repatriation of Israel, complete as they see it in 1948. Secondly, the return to Palestine of the major groups that were in charge of founding the original Israel. Interesting that the Chinese and Africans are two of the groups out of the four, and that... uh, The other people who came were Arabs or Spanish people who had been the original Jews known as Sephardic and Russians. So that second prophecy was in fact complete as far as they're concerned. The third prophecy is the building of the temple. And the fourth and final prophecy, which they say is underway now, is the coming of a new Messiah. Well, if one considers that 1949 is the third movement in the direction of the promised land, that the temple has already been built, and that Canada is a multicultural society being built not as a melting pot like the U.S., but as specific groups of people will be assigned different locations, probably what exists today as national parks, then the story fits Canada better than it fits Israel. It's like the third rather than the second rebuilding of Israel. And 323, three is always higher because it has the symbol of the breast. The number three is shaped more like the mother. And Israel was always a matriarchal society. Not a matrial society, but matriarchal born from the ark. Noah's Ark. Now, there is another thing that has happened in this area, and that's the building of a place called Ryan's Well. Ryan's Well, they say here, is a kid called Ryan who discovered that Africa needed well water and made collections to raise funds to send wells to Africa. And he comes from Kempville, and therefore they built one of the areas in Kempville and called it Ryan's Well. But in fact, the truth of the matter is that a 100 years ago, Australia built the first Ryan's Well. And that was to send people into the interior, starting from unloading cattle 
on the southern side of Australia nearest to Antarctica and moving them inland to an oasis which was called Ryan's Well. So it basically matches the beginning of the development of a new continent. The Jews of Israel have a favorite food, which is called a bagel. Bagel is basically shaped like a donut, but is more nutritious. If you look at the bagel, it is a replica of the northern area around the North Pole. There is no land mass at the North Pole, therefore the hole in, in the bagel or a donut. And Tim Horton's Donuts has the roll out the rim to win thing for women. So matriarchal society, continent shaped like a donut that looks like a Jewish bagel on which you put cream cheese, which means there's a link to Philadelphia and the cracked bell of Philadelphia, which the biggest one, by the way, is in in Russia. Everything is pointing to this area being the handle on a bagel which looks like a frying pan, but nothing in the middle, so that a space program could be, in fact, constructed underground and rockets launched from the North Pole. And we know that the U.S. has built nuclear submarines for the purpose of laying underwater for a period as long as two years before needing to come up for replenishment. And uh, a bagel cut in two, in half, would have a surface on which you could operate, but things coming out of the middle going into space and retrieving things from space. Alaska having the Sitka Temple in this new territory. Kempville being Ryan's Well, which is the first oasis met while on the trip going north. All of it suggests that Canada fits better or the Nordic continent fits better the concept of a new promised land than does the Middle East with its possibility and probability of destruction by a nuclear type war which basically is being suggested by the Iranian growing warlike mentality to have nuclear power. Korea, North Korea, Pakistan, India, China, uh, all of which have nuclear weapons. Now, with the U.S. siding with a peace plan, Iran, the Arabs are saying, Saudi Arabia, that they're going to acquire nuclear weapons, but that they're not in need to develop it. They founded the nuclear weapon industry for Pakistan. They paid for it. And the understanding is that nuclear weapons can be moved into Saudi Arabia anytime they want them. All of that takes care of the three basic uh, things. The refounding of Canada in 49, the existence of the temple in Sitka, and 
the repatriation. Right now, there's uh, uh, a move in Canada to prioritize immigration from uh, the Philippines in the same way as they let in people from your place, from your ancient ancestors' place. When the the earthquake and stuff happened there, so that's been done. The only thing underway is a Messiah, and we know that being a matrial society or matriarchal society, if the new founding of a state based on Israel would be created, it would have a female as a leader, just as Golda Meir was the first leader of Israel the last time around. The fact that the people at uh, welfare in um, New York State wanted Jennifer to go to Messina in January, 50 miles out of town, and their purpose was to assassinate her on the way, also suggests that Jennifer is, in fact, the Messiah that has been prepared for this mission. So if that makes any sense to you or not, (laughs) that's what I've come to, is that Sarai, not Abraham, was the reason for the creation of Israel. The woman who gave birth to a child at the age of 90, S-A-R-I and I-S. R A are the same thing. The E L is just a pronoun for meaning the or she, Israel. So when they so say the signs out of the heavens say there would be rocks falling from the sky, among other things, things that were happening that seemed to be impossible. And all of it was written in the Torah, which, if you look at the word Torah, it basically, in the code, means root, the root book, or the root plan. All of that is basically confirmed by the Church of England's diagram of the plan which I've shown you copies of, printed some in the paper, but the detail was so small that it's very hard to read, but it's it's a journey described leaving a place where a male is inside a female, which is a right side up, triangle inside a circle and follows the journey down to Enoch and then moves on to Noah's Ark. And at the halfway point of that journey arrives at the biggest place, which is Sarai and Abraham. And then they take a trip more towards the middle and arrive at David, which is the creation of the state of Israel. And they pass that, moving out, and come back to Zoroaster, which is the state of Iran, in fact, coming into its own with the... um, the coming of a new religion based on Islam, or the word friend. 
ami in French, which resembles the word nun, which is new one. And nun is a word that includes un, UN, United Nations, and un, the number one for women. They come down to a central point where you should have at year zero, 4,000 years after Adam, the creation of Jesus Christ and the crucifixion. However, the problem is on the plan produced by the Church of England, the name at the bottom is not Jesus, but Jacques. Jack, and a jack suggests a turnaround, a lifting up, so a retracing of the journey this time backwards is written by Matthew, and the first one had been written by Luke. Luke, in French, is linked to the ass. Jesus comes in on an ass, but Q in French, C-U-L, means dead end. Jesus came in on an ass and was crucified. But Matthew is the tax collector, and he returns the journey backwards from where it came. The only problem with Matthew compared to uh, Luke is that the journey ends before it gets back to its original start point of Adam. It ends in what appears to be the year 1976 and begins to shrink until it disappears by the year 2100, or just before then. Most of the damage having been done by approximately 2062, and having no one survive back to the year one, suggest that maybe the people who were told to go to the Southern Hemisphere and continue living down there may be fooled into believing that they will survive in the Southern Hemisphere, but that in fact the end of time is happening in this century. And having begun in 1976, uh, add 16 years, goes to 92, 1992 is exactly 500 years from the arrival of Christopher Columbus. 1492 to 1992. And then... Again, 16 years to start, a new thing is 2008. 2008, 50 years, brings it to rocks falling from the sky concept with an asteroid returning as it does every 75 years or so. Halley's Comet. If a, a comet were to hit in 58 or before, certainly by 2062, the cleanup of survivors would have been accomplished and the earth would lie fallow until the year 4000. 
4004 is what Mason described as the beginning of the world. I suggest it's more like 4040 since 2020 will be the time when all the people will know. Just as when you get your eyes checked, you see clearly when your eyes are 2020. So there's a clear point of view that includes the Torah, that includes um, the Bible of first produced by the King of England in the 1600s, bringing it to 2100 is your 500 years. And it basically all says the same thing, that number four is the right number to be looking at. By the way, Ottawa is losing for nothing in the hockey game played today on the 17th, the day before 18. Our address is uh, 908, and Israel was reformed in 48 and Canada in 49. 98 appears in my phone number, in Jennifer's uh, cell phone, on our address, and what have you. The hockey game you're talking about, that's the against the New York Rangers, right? No, it's against the Blue Jackets of Columbus. Okay. So I remember. They also lost 4-1, to one, I think, two weeks ago, to Philadelphia. And the link to Philadelphia is Ottawa's captain left for Detroit, a Swede called Danielson, during the summer and was replaced by a hockey player from California called Bobby Ryan. Hmm. Ryan's well, yeah. and he's become Canada, one of Ottawa's top hockey players. The whole thing with um, the Toronto uh, politician over there, is that part of the process of... Uh, that, that's, that's also part of this whole scheme, Okay, is having the dumbest mayor, the crudest mayor, in Toronto, because Toronto is part of the place that will be underwater. He matches and surpasses the mayor of Washington, who also took drugs. But this guy adds a totally new element of crudeness and uh, admitting but refusing to leave. That's to really get people, I guess, uh, uh, excited. Yeah, and his name, by the way, is Ford, which is the, the basis of uh, Detroit, Ford Foundation. And in uh, Ogdensburg, the main house was the Ford Mansion, which became a content for Grey Nuns. Huh. Uh. So what we're seeing is they wrote the plan and then they have it in their ability to make it happen with the UN, the Ford Foundation, the mayor of Washington and Toronto. Everything is in the power of the media to make a big show out of it but the media is owned either by governments or billionaires, all of which are on the plan. It also, I would suggest, includes Obamacare to denigrate black people through the denigration of the president. 
Oh, can't thanks. make a goddamn health program program. Of course, the president is a lawyer. He's not a programmer. The gray nuns are the programmers. The fact that most of the people that left Israel the first time around ended up settling in Germany, and Germany created the blue nuns, and the blue nuns are the original gray nuns, and they are the nuns that control Jerusalem today for the Catholic Church, all Carmelites. Follow the light, Carmelite. Capulite. Seek the light. And Ottawa being part of the second key in hockey are basically <laughs> writing their view of the same story I'm just telling you. With Bobby Ryan becoming their leader scorer and their new captain, Jason Spezza, ZZ Spezza, ZZ Toth. Disease uh, a link to um, M- M- Amazonia, as they call them, or, and the link to yeah, Z, the top, the top cat. It's the the changing of power from the U.S. over to China, from China down to Brazil, from Brazil over to Australia. And then shut down. 21st century, two in one. It's for the purpose of then coming back after it lies fallow and re energizing the planet with a new population of what appears to be women. But it is simply a veneer over a three in one body, which is made out of male technology and a veneer that covers it all called women. Creation is the only one that can divert the plan, and creation's plan for now, as the cell has defined it, for me is that this eternity this universe cannot coexist. That eternity has to move on. And this planet and this universe has to be left behind. And the guide that will lead the show is Jennifer has the key that will, in fact, allow the entry into the next direction, uh, dimension. A fifth dimension in a fifth universe. I have the key that unlocks the departure from here. And before I leave, I must present to creation in the pineal court, a list of names of individuals from which this universe suffers. This planet has suffered. And that those people who made this planet suffer the most must be terminated. Those who made the place suffer, but have, in fact, requested a time in the cell to make up their, quote-unquote, karma, if one wants to use the Hindu word for describing what they do, they are cleansed and repatriated. But all the people who played no role will be led by a board of directors called a critical mass of 13 and led by a monarch, um, female, 
And that's what we're here to accomplish. My job will at one stage be to leave here and set up all of the trials. Jennifer is to stay behind for a while. Number of years, 14 seems to be the number that after I leave physically, she remains behind to lead the board of directors and all of the people who did not participate in ruining this universe, changing the speed of its expansion to a point where it could not stop in 2008 at the place where it was supposed to, and then transition to a crunch side where all the people who did nothing to hurt life on this planet are waiting for the leadership to arrive and the departure for the sixth dimension into a fifth universe. Matter into a new universe. The fifth of 26, I'm told, that exists. And the continuing evolution of humans will continue with a jump start from the position we're at without the interference of the people who have, in fact, caused the problem, the media, the law society, the courts, the police, the medical industry, all of these people, the insurance industry, must be cleansed unless they have done something to mitigate their circumstances before they die. All they seem to want to do is aggravate the problem for the people left behind. Uh, I see what creation has um, in store for you and, and Jenny, what the system you know, by calling her Messiah, they, it's kind of unclear, like, what they have planned for her. For the themselves. system has a female chosen already, and she is the former president of the Ukraine, and they've built a palace on the Black Sea for her. And... Nobody in Russia uh, wants to admit to the purpose of this palace. Currently, she's going through brainwashing in a um, prison, Ukrainian prison. She also has long hair, blonde, I believe. You know, so it's what's... the choice between creator and creation's view of the end. That's interesting. I remember that, Ukrainian. I remember you mentioning something a while back about the symbolism behind the Red Sea. And it, it's used in... Um, you know, in the media. The Red Sea is, no, the Red sea. is um, a continuation of the story of Sarai and Abraham taken over by uh, Nefertiti and Akhenaten. And they, in fact, returned to Akhenaten's original name, uh, which... Uh, is linked to uh, Aten and Amen, the two religions of Egypt, 
uh, ten being what they created, Nefertiti and Akhenaten, and uh, you know, the family name having originally been Tut Moses, Akhenaten takes back the name Moses, and they travel out of Egypt after ten plagues have forced the king to make, uh, to accept their right to leave. And uh, here we're reversing the situation. It's getting the king or prime minister to accept Jennifer's right to come, which is a mirror image. But when they leave, Egypt and they arrive at the Red Sea, that's where the design for the letter Y is created. We are told that uh, the males turn right and go into Jordan and live in the desert in Kiosk. We're told that in the story for 40 years. But what they don't tell us is the females led by Nefertiti turn left and go and establish the territory that is, in fact, to become Israel in Palestine and produce a new line of children in uh, the Golan Heights from what is uh, Lebanon and Syria today, and that the original state of Israel without a name based on Sarai is in fact the place they recreate the men, mama's boys. And Forty years later, 41st year, again the number 14, uh, the return, and by the way, the goaler for Ottawa has number 41, they return and found uh, the, the state of Israel officially, but all the men who had left Egypt are all dead except for Moses. And uh, a king is named, King Saul is named, uh, which the English translate to Paul, the Apostle Paul. And King Saul uh, becomes the first. The first is always cosmetic. And... Uh, Hey, Glenn. Or a symbolic person, then the second one, second king of Israel, is David. So, similar type story could apply here that uh, Jennifer leading the people into the promised land. Glenn is, Keely. In fact, Step number one, and then a David is step number two. Hey, Glenn Keeley, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yo, uh, you know who uh, Brian Desbro is? Brian Desbro. I've heard yeah, of him. What do you know about him? I beg your pardon? Uh, what do you? What's your relationship to Brian Desbro? I don't have a relationship to Brian Desbro. You sure? Nothing to do with Desdemona? Where, where David I Icke? No you, you weren't connected? no relationship to Brian Desbro. What do you know Brian about him? Brian Desbro uh, and my wife shared accommodations for a period of time. That's the only part that I know. What do you know know about newer linguistic programming, Glenn? Who are you? Who are you? Oh, this is Big Luke. You know who this is. This is Luke from Philly. 
I don't understand how you're on the line here. Glenn, I call you all the time. I mean, you know, at least twice a year. You know, I, I keep in a loop with you. You know, this is this loop from Philly. I'm just asking what's up with you and Brian Desborough. That's all. I don't know Brian Desborough. I've never met Brian Desborough. I've seen a picture of Brian Desborough. That's all I know. Good enough. All right, you take care. All right, I was just and double checking. All I know is that he's from England and seems to be a little wacky. When it comes to uh, <laughs> when it comes to what of uh, uh, the unknown, by the way, <clears throat> Ottawa has just scored a goal, which makes it four-one, like fourteen. But I, I don't understand how a guy from Philly is on the line when I'm talking to Jerry. Oh, it's because. Um... I'm on the um, the talk show, and people can call in. Okay. So you you might have in. told me that at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't mean to interrupt, but you just go ahead. Y'all have a good time, and uh, you know what I mean? God bless and all of that. I was double-checking, all right? Don't good. God bless me. I don't want to be less. I want to be more. <laughs> So you keep your blessings to yourself because I have nothing to do with blessings. God is a thieving bunch of nuns. Ooh. And if you're too stupid to not understand that, then you shouldn't be in this conversation. Yeah. I I I left it uh, open, uh, was hoping uh, Dana O'Brien would call in, but they didn't call in. So. In any event, this is now the same score against uh, uh, Ottawa four to one that occurred a couple of weeks ago with Philadelphia. Those are the two losers that uh, obviously the coding structure is now highlighting. Philadelphia to Columbus, Ohio. Hello? Are you yeah. still there, Jerk? Yeah, I'm still here. Who, who's this? Somebody else calling? Who's this? Uh, this is Paul. What up, Jared? I just wanted to listen. I was just sitting there. Oh, Paul. Oh, yeah. So, Paul. What's up, kid? Uh, you've never spoke to Glenn before, have you? No, I've listened a lot, yeah. Oh. Well. Paul, are, are you aware that uh, the name Paul comes from Saul, the no. original king of Israel? I did not know that, no. PNS postscript uh, are are used in language to uh, act as a metaphor for the origin of genetic engineering uh, in Israel. By Sarai. Sarai, the wife of Abraham, who had a child at the age of 90. The age of 90? Yeah. Abraham was 100, and his wife was 90, and they had a child. Now, if one doesn't understand the relationship of such a comment to genetic engineering and the birth of a child by means other than copulation and that the Virgin Mary is just a continuation of that story, uh, 
then they'll never get the point that Jesus is not a person, but a gene pool. And that gene pool is one that can make children at uh, uh, a period in life where human beings cannot, by normal means, have babies. So that, that's we, the bloodline, then. We, the white people who originate out of Georgia, are that gene pool. And the reason why the on, uh, third in line to the throne of England was just named George. Hmm. Yeah, the name George, is, 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 when I'm thinking about it, has a uh, rego and artificial insemination. Yeah. My brother's name is George also. <laughs> <laughs> It all ties together. <laughs> yeah. Uh. And the word George is, of course, regal. Yeah. Just like my neighbor across the street is called Gorel. His name is regal as well. And the, the metaphor here is to say that you live you die and you are reanimated or you re-go the next time around as a new person but with the genetics of a person who lived before. If that process is not done by the nuns, such as the gray nuns and the blue nuns, in secret in their cloisters within cloisters, it can only, in fact, be done by a higher power than the higher power. God, the nuns, being the higher power, are the ones with the most money. They own and operate stock exchanges all over the world. But higher, the word higher suggests high and higher, second highest, but not highest, not the highest power. The highest power is matter. It's what created the Big Bang, what started our universe. It did it from the outside, and it's called creation. And it's a process, not a person. And its responsibility is to create life and allow that life, the freedom to exist in order to create the best possible, using the, the other guy's word, the other nun's word, human being, you man, uh, the intent was to allow a human to make a lot of copies of creation. Instead, creator, the genetic engineer that lives here, hijacked the process and creates its copies of itself. The fascist bastards that rule the world today in the disguise they have called nuns. Mm. The genetic engineers who make gene pools. 
and moves them around the world to create the kind of task orientation they believe they want and uh, they have the media to use. They can create a mass murderer as a bookend to a gene pool and on the other side put a serial rapist. Or they can create the dumbest person in the world the crudest, dumbest person, and elect a mayor of Toronto. (laughs) Or what they do most of all is create a dumbed-down version of themselves. Now, when you're already stupid and you live in a nunnery, and you make a dumbed-down person of yourself, what are you attempting to do? You're attempting to create a slave population who will always agree to do what you tell them to do, no matter how ridiculous it is. And then you hire them in government, and you call them civil servants, while in fact, you know damn well, they want to be civil masters. How else can you explain a person who works for a welfare program who says, you're out on the street and you need a place to live, and the rent which you can get a place to live, the cheapest in this town, is $400. And therefore, since you're broke, we're going to give you $300. Now go find that place that costs $400 and move in. Only way you can explain that kind of stupidity is genetic engineering followed by social engineering. So you take a dumb person and you make them dumber still, and they will tell people the things you've told them to say. And the world is filled to the brim today with these people working government, deciding the lives of the people who actually do work on the outside. And they constantly get in the way and steal from the people they are supposed to be serving. They become the writers of the new laws. Dumber and dumber still. And creation, who started the process wanting to make people as equal to creation, is disgusted with what has occurred on this planet and is saying, time to shut it down. Time to gather up the group of people that will lead and lead all of the people who were born before this plan was introduced in 600 years previous to the birth of Enoch. Some 6,000 years ago. And all of those people who didn't fall for it and died are waiting to leave. And they need a group of people with functioning brains 
13 of which can help implement a kickstart in the next universe which awaits our arrival. That's my task. A group of people called Leaky are here to introduce the beginning of the process hijacked by Creator in Africa. My name is Keeley. The only difference between Keeley and Leakey is they do the beginning of the process. I do the end of their stupidity. In order for me to do what I need to do, I have to identify how stupidity came about. And I have spent 71, almost 72 years doing that here. I know what needs to be done in the future, and I have identified the stupidity. I know that trials must take place, and the only witnesses against the accused will be themselves, who without an ability to lie, will have to tell the court exactly what they did. While those people who have enough brains to leave the system behind, as Jennifer and I have, and as some other people have told me they have, they will lead an exodus, not off this planet, but out of this universe, to leave this universe, which has, in fact, put in motion all that is needed to destroy itself, to finish off their job. The beginning of this departure is to begin by not interfering with the stupid people who are, in fact, leading their people to their destruction. And they're going to do that in North America by having the wall that holds back the Great Lakes called Michigan North collapse. And all of the water west of that place flow into and drown much of what is below, starting with Chicago. Indianapolis, Detroit. If you look at the news today, you'll find out that those people sitting at the football game in Chicago have just been evacuated because of a preliminary tornado type of activity. Weather, which is disturbing everything, from Chicago to, destroy, to Detroit right now. The process that we are going to go through between what began in 2008 and ends in 2016 will have done much of the preparation, if not, in fact, killed millions of people. Creation sits by and lets it happen because the people who cause the problems are led by the Ford Foundation. Mayor Ford of Chicago, of Toronto, is not an accident waiting to happen. 
It was created, manufactured, not born, but genetically engineered to do exactly what he's doing. The building of robotic people is not an accident. Detroit was set out by the Ford Foundation. By the way, the word Ford comes from the Nordic word fjord, which means the narrowing. Detroit in French is étroit. Étroit means the narrowing. The narrowing of the brain cells that allows people to become as stupid as robots are when it comes to social values. And only consider what is in their self-interest rather than in the leadership of the people of the world. They are the end product that started with a rat, went to a cat, developed into a scapegoat, and is waiting to be converted to a space traveler, a new species based on the chicken. all of which are in my backyard waiting for me to feed them. (laughs) I got to go. Okay, Glenn. Bye for now.